What's up Guardians and welcome to my weekly Xur builds, a series that aims to create a Gambit build for each class out of the exotics Xur has on offer every week. These exotics may or may not be the best builds or even work at all, but damn it, I'll build them anyway. This week, Xur comes to us with the following exotics. For the weapon, the Graviton Lance for 29 Legendary Shards. Hunters can purchase the Shinobu's Vow, Titans can get Armamentarium, and Warlocks are offered Getaway Artist. As always, each armor piece is priced at 23 shards. So let's look at the weapon to begin with. The Graviton Lance's exotic perk is Black Hole. Second shot of a burst rips a hole through space-time, doing high damage and recoil with no falloff. Its second perk is Cosmology. Kills with this weapon cause enemy targets to detonate and spawn void projectiles that track targets. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you could have gotten this with the Prime Gaming service a couple of days earlier, but really, it's only a middling sort of weapon for Gambit. You could pair it with Nezarek Sin to make the most of the void damage and keep your ability charge rate up, but it doesn't really have a place in any of the builds we have today. Speaking of which, our first build is for Shinobu's Vow. The exotic perk is New Trick. Improves Skip Grenade and you gain an additional Skip Grenade charge. Skip Grenade returns energy when it damages enemies. I'm thinking that all three exotics this week lean towards a collector build. So with this in mind, we'll be starting off the Hunter build on mid-tree arc, mainly for its devastating super, but the ebb and flow ability will be incredibly helpful for recharging our grenade quickly. Our weapons are the Heritage Shotgun in our Kinetic slot, with the Recombination perk, so our grenade kills bolster the damage dealt by the first shot of this weapon. In our Energy slot, the Gnawing Hunger with Demolitionist, which will recharge our grenades faster. Finally, the Lament Sword as our power weapon for its heavy boss damage. As our focus is on our grenades, we'll want to first improve our Discipline stat to reduce the cooldown. Then we'll be running Ashes to Assets twice, Energy Converter, Shield Break Charge, Sword Reserves, Taking Charge, Sword Scavenger twice, Sustained Charge and Bomber. The best tactic is to land your grenade in front of the enemies so it has the best spread when it splits apart into the homing projectiles. Because the skip grenade regains energy when it damages enemies, this allows us to quickly take down both red and yellow bars which recharges our energy again. If we run out of energy, we top it up with a gnawing hunger. This performed better than expected given its grenade focus. It does lack somewhat in defences against enemy invaders and invader suitability, but overall it's a good grenade build, which is the main problem. Grenade builds just aren't that good in a gambit setting. For example, the best way to utilise our grenades is to throw them at a fair distance so it can split and damage a larger group of enemies, but then we have to spend a few seconds running up to that area to collect the moats which is just too much time to waste with other enemies on field and our teammates being in the fray anyway, so they'll collect the moats themselves. Having tested this as a collector, in the end I think it'll be better suited as a sentry, negating the need to collect moats and just focus on using that distance to our grenade's advantage. The second exotic this week is the Armamentarium. The perk is a lot simpler than the name, gain an additional grenade charge. Again, we'll be assuming that the collector role is suitable for this build, so we're going with bottom tree solar, meaning ability kills, including grenades, restore health and could generate sunspots recharging our grenades even faster, and we'll also get sun warrior, granting weapons extra damage. Our weapon loadout is pretty much the same as the hunter build, and for the same reasons except for the lament, which we'll replace with black talon. This way we can keep the high damage but the additional ability to fire a projectile will be very helpful against far off enemies, such as an opposing invader or if the primeval is the dreaded meatball. Reinhardt players will be pleased. Hello. Our mods focus on increasing our discipline skill again, then we'll be going for just one ashes to assets, sustained charge, two auto rifle loaders, taking charge, two sword reserves, shield break charge, sword scavenger and energy converter. This is a sticky grenade approach, so we should try to land our grenades on targets that are close to others for maximum effect. We should follow our grenade into the fray to collect the moats quickly and be ready to take advantage of the sunspots that spawn on a kill. Our abilities are geared towards keeping our grenade charge topped up and ready, but don't be afraid to whip out the heritage against those yellow bars at any time. 
When you do get a grenade kill, there is a good deal of super energy generated, but not anywhere near enough to make this a viable path for a fast paced game like Gambit. You won't get a lot of supers in a single game. Even though we're effectively doubling our potential grenade output with the armamentarium, it still isn't enough to make this a worthy choice. It's an unfortunate victim of the generally poor suitability of grenade builds in Gambit. Finally, we have the Getaway Artist. The dynamic duo perk allows us to convert your arc grenade into a supercharged arc soul. The arc soul functions as an autonomous turret. So, when you convert your grenade, you'll get a supercharged arc soul for 20 seconds. It's like having a fifth teammate who you've invited to play Destiny for the first time and you say, just shoot things for now, we'll learn about moats later. This time, we're going to utilize the extra damage granted by the supercharged arc soul to build a reaper slash collector, and to support that, we're using bottom tree arc thanks to arc soul. Normally, this will grant you and your teammates an arc soul when you place a rift. However, with this exotic, if you have the supercharged arc soul active, placing this rift will reset the timer back to 20 seconds for as long as you remain in the rift. When you leave, the timer begins counting down again. We'll come back to why this is great in a moment. Our weapons are the Succession for Invaders and Shriekers, Gnawing Hunger for Demolitionists, and the Anarchy purely for Primeval Damage. Our mods will bump the Discipline stat, and along with this we have Explosive Finisher, Bomber, Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder, Reserves and Scavenger, and Auto Rifle Loader. Now, if we play our abilities right, we can have a Supercharged Arc Soul active for the whole game. See, when we activate it, we have 20 seconds until it runs out. During that time, it'll be firing at the adds without missing, unless they hide behind a wall. With that added damage, we can swiftly take our enemies with our gnawing hunger, which will recharge the grenade energy due to the demolitionist perk. When the timer gets low, we activate our rift, bring it back up to full for its duration, which is even longer due to electrostatic surge. Then it will begin counting down again. All in all, we can extend the supercharged arc soul duration to as much as 60 seconds per cast. That's more than enough time for our grenade to recharge to full, starting the cycle all over again. I was genuinely surprised by this build. I feel like this build could do with a little extra tweaking, but maybe I'll come back to it in another video. For now, the synergy of the Demolitionist perk and the Gnawing Hunger with the arc soul rift and the supercharged arc soul exotic perk make for one beast of a build. I'd be surprised if you don't get the most kills in every Gambit match you play with this. It really is like having an extra teammate whose only goal is to assist you and you get all the credit. It doesn't provide any burst damage at a distance against enemy invaders, but it could come in handy if they get brave and try to approach you. The Arc Soul could deal the damage needed to grant a cheeky save. At any rate, this one has the potential to be a really solid build. This week was a hard one. All three exotics have grenade enhancements which made me struggle to come up with differing strategies. There are just much better approaches that will pretty much always be above grenade builds. There are a couple of mods that I don't have that may be significant improvements, but I honestly can't imagine them being the kind of changes required to make a grenade build that justifiably stands among the alternatives. That being said, Getaway Artist was a surprise thanks to the Arc Soul turret. We may be coming back to it later, but for now, I think I'd like to say to Zer, bro, you done goofed this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of these builds and Zer's exotics, and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more, there are a few other videos on the channel, and you can find me on Twitch at Amforge Gaming. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.